Sandy, would you lead us in prayer? You've got a mic there. Lead us in prayer, would you? Thank you. I'll stay seated. Father, we just thank you for who you are and what you mean to us, that you opened the eyes of our heart, yes. that we could know you, that we could receive you, and we could have you live in us. What a magnificent story that is. Yes. We thank you, Lord, for every person here tonight working and doing what they're doing, just being here, loving you, serving you, and hearing your voice, because all who belong to God hear his voice. Thank you, Lord. Bless us tonight as we want to bless you and bless each other in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. You'll notice a theme running through these songs. If you want to sit down, you can, but, <laughs> and it looks like most of you do. Okay, that's all. But we're going to keep us. There's a friend like the Holy Jesus. No God by, no God by, no God to give our souls its success. No God by, no God by, no God by.
And then we're going to sing a song that was written about 145 years ago. And that's not so new. And then after that, we'll sing two or three choruses from the 70s and 80s. How's that? Okay. You remember those. You know, there's a song that says, You are my all in all. You are my strength when I am weak and all the other good words of me. And I was reading in Ephesians chapter 1, starting at verse 21. And uh, by the way, I went back to the King James Bible because it says it kind of the way I remember it, memorized it, and sort of knew it when I was younger. How many? <laughs> <laughs> it's talking about Jesus is above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named and not only in this world, but also in that which is to come, and hath put all things under his feet, and gave to him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that fills all in all. And that's what this song talks about. And then after that, we're going to sing an old song that says, Take My Life. And let it be consecrated, Lord, to thee. That's always a good prayer, isn't it? So join me in worshiping as we sing.
Yes, Lord, we just want to be like you, Jesus. We just want to be like you, Lord. Oh, we worship your great name. We worship your name, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Lord, that's the cry of our hearts, to be like you. To be like you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God's good. Oh, good to be with you again. Isn't it good to have Pastor Gordon Linda back? <laughs> well, we're so glad to be back. I told my wife, I'm not sure why we leave the Okanagan in the summertime, you know. We used to come here for our holidays in the Okanagan, and now we're leaving. It doesn't make sense, but... We did have a, a wonderful time. We were down in, uh, in the States. My wife, all her family, basically, except for, of course, our children. Well, one of our sons lived down there, but all her, our, her family lived down in the States. So we got to spend some time with her cousins in Spokane, which was really great, um, uh, spending time with them. And then we got to be with her brother, who had that major stroke. And uh, so we got to be with them in church on Sunday, as well as went out for... Mexican dinner. Then we got to be with her 95-year-old uncle. 95. And he's as sharp as a tack. Guy has written, a hum, I don't know how many books he's got written and, and telling stories and stuff. And he's hard of hearing, so he, he got, he's got to do most of the talking. <laughs> but we had a great visit there, and then we had a chance to see our, young, our middle son in uh, Ferndale with uh, his children as well. So we had a great time. I want to thank those great speakers who spoke for the last three weeks while I was gone, Roy and Don and, and Dan there. I heard they did a great job, so thank you for just being available. We appreciate that. Don't forget, next Wednesday is our meal, our luncheon. Let service at 11 and lunch is at 12. And I uh, talked to Karen. We're going to have a great meal again. And so uh, be sure to get your tickets if you haven't done that already. We really need to know the numbers. That really helps us. I think last time, you know, we, we had a lot of people come in, which is fine. I mean, we, we won't turn anybody away. But uh, so if you could let us know, it'd be great. If you can't pay, you know, we've got debit machine back there. We take cash. We take credit cards. Uh, we take your car if you want to give that away. <coughs> But uh, anyways, if you can't pay, we still want you to come, right? We want to have you there. So that's going to be next Wednesday at 11 for the service. And then noon, uh, we have our wonderful meal. And we got Pastor Don Richmond uh, going to be sharing next uh, Wednesday. He uh, oversees a lot of our chaplaincy in our city and in uh, West Kelowna with hockey. And he's involved with the fire department. And so he, he's got some great stories to share, so I know you'll want to be here for that as well. I think that's all the announcements. Do you notice my wife and I, we both got haircuts? She cut hers and she cut mine. She scalped me, though. <laughs> so anyways, we, we're, we're trying these new looks out, so... I don't know if anybody noticed. Anybody notice? Did anybody notice my wife's different hair? How many of you men know that we always get in trouble when our wife cuts our, her hair? Because we don't often recognize it. You know, they look at us and say, well, what do you think? Uh, that's a nice talk you got on. Um, up higher? Uh, new earrings? Uh, no. 
Oh, you got your hair done. And then you have to say the next words are important. It really looks great. <laughs> Otherwise, you're on the couch that night, right? Well, I'm happy to continue our series on I Believe in Miracles. How many here believe in miracles? Amen. And, um, and t- tonight, I want to talk to you about miracles that surround us. And then in September, of course, next week, we have uh, you know, our services, Pastor Don's sharing in, in the afternoon. But in September, we're going to wrap it up with two more services on uh, I Believe in Miracles. And uh, one of the services, we're going to talk about miracles in the making. And I just felt the Lord really laid that on my heart. Sometimes we don't see a miracle right away, but I want you to know that there sometimes there are miracles in the making, and we'll present that from the Scripture. And then the last one, we're going to be praying for people and praying for miracles. So that'll be on, I think it's September the 14th. If I remember right. So today we're talking about miracles that surround us. And uh, we need to pray for a couple of people tonight. There's a couple of our people in the hospital, Gordon Olson. He uh, took a fall, and so he's in the hospital, and I got to see him yesterday. And then also Marilyn Schultz is in there. She had surgery and all kinds of things, uh, complications. I mean, it was just but anyways, uh, she was in a lot of pain yesterday, and, and we told her, you know, we, we prayed for her there, but we said, we'll get the, the seniors to pray for, for you. And I know we believe in prayer, right? Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, Pastor uh, Craig Gibbs lost his son a few days ago. Who's that? Uh, Craig Gibbs. Oh. His, his son passed away, so I thought we should pray for him and the family. Wow. They, for Craig and the we'll pray for Craig. Yeah. I, didn't hear, I didn't hear that. Who is that? Okay. Aren't we glad we serve a God that hears and answers prayers? So, Father, tonight, I know, Lord, there's a lot of needs, spoken and unspoken here tonight. And, Lord, we're so glad that we can look to you, that you're the God that hears and answers our prayer. And, Lord, we do lift up Craig to you, Lord, and, Lord, the loss of his son. Lord, we know he's been heavy on his heart, and we just, Lord, we don't always understand these things, but, Lord, we, we, our eyes are on you. We fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. So, Lord, will you just bring your presence around him and his family? Will you bring comfort and strength to him? And, Lord, we just thank you that you do hear and answer prayers. And, Lord, we pray for those that need a healing touch in their bodies tonight. Lord, we mentioned several out loud, and, we, and Lord, there's others that we uh, didn't mention that we're thinking about right now, and we lift them up to you tonight, Lord. Thank you, Father, that you know every person that needs your touch tonight. You know those who need healing, Lord, those who are struggling with pain, those who are fighting cancer, Lord. God, all these various situations, we bring them before the throne of grace, and we're asking God for divine intervention. We believe in miracles. We know, God, that you can work miracles, that you're a healing God. And, God, we just pray for your miraculous touch in these individuals tonight. Be with us, Lord, as we look at your word. I pray that we would be encouraged and strengthened by your word tonight. I pray in Jesus' name, amen. A couple verses to start off with in Romans chapter 1, verse 20. For since the creation of the of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made, so that men are without excuse. And then I love this chapter, Psalm 139, but verse 14. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. I think I saw this on a Christmas movie. Miracles happen for those who believe. I thought, that's a good quote. You know, miracles happen for those who believe. Do you believe that? 
Miracles happen to those who believe. You know, and every day, you and I witness many miracles that often escape us. You know, a number of months ago, I was talking to uh, somebody in our church, and we're, we got talking about miracles, and they said, oh, you know, I really haven't seen a miracle. And I thought, oh, that's interesting that you... And he probably was thinking about maybe a miracle of healing or something. But I thought, you're surrounded by miracles. <laughs> and you don't even know it. We see miracles all the time. And, uh, and so we're going to talk about that tonight. And so you know, I said that while we're praying for a Pacific miracle to happen. But, I, but you know... I want, to, I want to build your faith. I want, you, I want to encourage you. It, and because the God that we serve is a miracle-working God. He is a miracle-working God. And he hasn't changed. One of the churches that we went to was a four-square church. That's where her brother goes to church in Salem, Oregon. And on the wall, and I told my wife, you know, because every four-square church has this on the wall. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. That's the model of the church. And, uh, and uh, so I, you know, I got excited when I saw that because it brought back memories. I pastored four square churches for about six years uh, before I got saved and came in the POC. <laughs> but, you know, oh, I'm just, I'm just kidding because you don't know me well enough yet. <laughs> but I, th I thought that is such a great statement, you know. For every, every time people come to church, they are reminded of that because it's right on the wall. You know, Jesus Christ is same yesterday, today, and forever. He is the same. We believe that, don't we? Yes. And so we're going to talk about some miracles that surround us. And I, I have five of them I want to talk to you about tonight. Uh, first off, number one is the miracle of life. Now, three times I have been blessed to see the birth of one of my children. Of course, I only have three. But the first one... You know, when I, back, you know, back a little bit before my time, they didn't let fathers in the room. And, and maybe some of you men here never got to see your kids being born. But so I got to see all three of my sons being born. And I remember when my, I were, my oldest one, actually, he was born in Phoenix, Arizona. And so I told the doctor, I said, I, I, I want to be there for, you know, when my wife is going to give birth. He said, well, I don't like fathers in the room. I said, well, why not? He said, well, he said, I've had a father one time beat up on me. <laughs> I don't know how true that was, but he's just going on talking about all this negative experience. And he said, so he said, if I'm, I'm delivering, you're not going to be in there. I said, well, you don't, you don't have to worry about me. I, I, I'm a hunter, you know. I, I used to. I actually said that to the doctor. But anyway, another doctor came on, and I said, you know, can I be there to see my son get born, you know? And, and he said, yeah, yeah, come on in here. He said, you're not afraid a little bit of blood, are you? I said, no, no, don't worry about me at all, as long as it's not my own, you know? <laughs> but, you know, when I saw the delivery of my son, Anthony, we call him Tony, wow. And I thought, fearfully and wonderfully made, and I thought, how can anybody doubt that there is a God? I mean, when he was born, you know, and he saw that, all those little fingers and all those little toes, then he took his first breath. I mean, it was an exciting and emotional time when that life came into the world. I mean, just the fact that, you know, and evolution says, you know, it happened because of some explosion out in space. You know, come on. I mean, how can you doubt? How can you doubt God when you hold that little baby in your hand? And, and that miracle takes place thousands of times every single day around our world. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. And that, of course, we know that, you know, and what's exciting to think about that that journey of that birth happened about nine months earlier when that sperm and that egg, I mean, and the chances of that, you know, I, you know, I don't know if you read up on that kind of stuff. Maybe we got some nurses in here tonight, you know, you studied all that kind of stuff. But it, it's amazing how that takes place, that the whole birth process is an amazing thing. The miracle of life is no ordinary act, but it's one that is filled with the proof of God's design. I mean, for us, you know, it, it's just amazing. And that 
Every baby is born with its own DNA. Every baby has a unique fingerprint. I mean, you think about all those things. It's, it's amazing. And when that baby takes its first breath of air, it unleashes new life, new possibilities, new purpose. I think it's one of the most incredible miracles of God, the birth of a baby. And, you know, being a pastor for you know, a lot of years, I got to dedicate a lot of babies over that time. And a lot of you pastors here tonight know what I'm talking about. Got to dedicate a lot of babies. I don't know how many babies, but lots of babies being dedicated. Wow. And every time I dedicate a baby, I think I'm holding a precious life. I'm holding a miracle in my hands. It's amazing. It's amazing. In Genesis 2, 7 says, The Lord God formed the man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living being. And then again, the verse that we read out of Psalm 139, 14. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. We are an amazing body. A little bit later on, I'm going to talk about, a little bit more about that. But we are amazing. I don't think sometimes we realize how amazing we really are. We are amazing. We are a miracle. You are a walking miracle. Do you know that? Yes. So if you don't believe in miracles, just look in the mirror. <laughs> there is a miracle right there. Wow. And, well, and then second one, the miracle of the earth. Now, when I was in school, you know, we studied the earth and... Uh, most of my teachers, in fact, I think probably all of them were not Christians. And I was amazed how they, how they could teach that and not believe in a creator. Uh, you know, how they could uh, talk about all this stuff just evolving and, you know, blah, 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 blah. You know, I had a hard time passing any of those tests because I had, I had to be honest. You know, how did the world came into being? God. He created it. You know, so if you're in a public school... That's the wrong answer, but that is the right answer. <laughs> to think that it just all happened, I mean, come on. I have an iPad here. If I was to tell you that this is a result of an explosion at a garbage dump, would you believe me? You would say, there's no way, because this iPad is amazing. I mean, you know, our iPhones are amazing, aren't they? Uh, you know, you're thinking, you know, I mean, I got my iPhone here. And you're traveling along, and you're, you're saying, I wonder where the closest Tim Hortons is. And so you go on there, hey, Siri, and Siri comes on, where's the closest Tim Hortons? And just like that, he's telling you, I've got my volume off, that's why you don't hear him, or her, whatever it might be. It, it's amazing, though. And, and you look at this, and you say, this took a lot of smarts to do this. I mean, I don't know if you've ever taken an iPhone apart before to, to fix your screen. I, I don't recommend it. I did it once, and I lost my salvation. I, they've got these little tiny screws that are there. And I was sitting at the dining room table trying. I mean, the guy in our church told me, he said, Pastor, it's real easy. He says, you go on YouTube, and it just walks you right through. And so I said, okay. So I bought a screen off of Amazon, you know, and, and I took my old one off. And then I started to put these little tiny screws in. They're so small. They're so tiny. And I'm there, and I, I, I'm getting frustrated. I'm not swearing, but I'm getting frustrated. I'm not trying to put this in. My wife's trying to calm me down. You know, she says, "Hon, just calm down. I says, you come and sit here and you try it. <laughs> and so she came and sat down there and tried it too. And we couldn't do it. And finally, we just threw it all in a box. You know, that was it. And then, uh, and anyways, we went to, uh, we, were, we went to Grand Prairie. We were in Dawson Creek there. Went to Grand Prairie, found a, you know, a guy that did it, you know, at least uh, East Indian guy. And he went, zzz, zzz, he put it right together, you know. I don't know how he did it. But yeah, I looked at inside that iPhone. You know, and, and it's amazing. They have the camera there. You know, some of the newer iPhones now, the camera is so amazing. It's got telephotic lens on it. I mean, think about it, you know, the, the, just that little thing. And yet, to say that it just a, it happened uh, because of an explosion it would be ridiculous. Nobody here in that room would buy that. But you look at yourself, you are more amazing than a cell phone. 
You are more amazing than my iPad. You are amazing. The earth is amazing. Do you know that the earth is precisely where it needs to be? Uh, it's, you know, it, it, it's amazing. There's this nitro and oxygen that extends 50 miles above the earth, which just is perfect. It needs to be that way. It's so, and, and of course, the sun and the earth, you know, are exactly where they need to be. If the sun was any closer to the earth, we would all burn up. If it was any further away from the earth, we would all freeze to death. It's just exactly where it needs to be. The moon also plays a really important role in our existence. Of course, the tides, you know, I lived on the ocean for 30 years. We, you know, we constantly saw the tides as a result of the moon and the rotation of the earth, bringing in our seasons and stuff. I mean, all of these things are amazing when you think about it. It says in Psalm 24, verse 1 to 2, the earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it, for he found it upon the seas and established it upon the earth. So the miracle of the earth, and again, I'm, I'm just kind of, I'm not giving you a lot of information, just kind of a little bit of highlights. How about the miracle of creation? The miracle of creation, time does not permit me, you know, when, when Linda and I lived in Dawson Creek, it gets down to minus 40 in Dawson Creek. And during the minus 40 weather, you know, we had the bird feeder out there outside. And we were always amazed at these birds, skinny little legs, came there and, and survived. In fact, there's some gross beak, I think it's called the gross beak. They survived. They, they flourished in this cold weather. And I'm looking at these little birds with these little skinny legs and I think when I go outside in minus 40 degree weather, and I have been outside, I've got to really bundle up. And I may be, after I bundle up, I'm still cold. But here these little birds are. How did that happen? Now, I'm not smart enough to have the answer to that. I find it amazing. And then, of course, we lived on the coast for a lot of years and, you know, did a lot of fishing. Isn't it amazing how a fish will, a, a, little, a little, a fish will go to a river, a stream, lay its eggs, and then it'll die. Those little fries, they'll grow up, they'll go down that river, go out in the ocean, travel on the ocean, and then when there's time for them to die and, and lay their eggs, they'll go to, right back to the same stream where they were born. Now, I don't know if you've ever been on the coast and seen how many creeks and rivers and streams there are. It is mind-boggling. And yet those fish, without GPS can go right to the exact stream. How about snowflakes? Now, we lived in Dawson Creek where there's lots of snow. <laughs> they say there's no two flakes the same. They're all different. Isn't it amazing? Or how about those birds that fly thousands of miles every year? Isn't that amazing? Or how about the monarch butterfly? Do you know much about the monarch butterfly? The fourth generation of the monarch butterfly are the only ones that migrate. The first three generations hardly survive six weeks. These butterflies take a, a particular direction for migration. Uh, it's an unsolved mystery of our generation. Maybe one can attribute to instinct or programming. They fly at speeds that range between 12 and 25 miles an hour, similar to birds, and they, uh, you know, they use the updrafts and the thermals to glide, to, to, to glide them. But they preserve their energy, and it requires flapping their wings 2,500, and they travel 2,500 miles or 4,000 kilometers, voyage from the Great Lakes in Canada all the way to the central Mexican hills, and then they come back. Those little tiny monarch butterflies. And the birds, I mean, isn't that amazing? It's a miracle. When you see these Canadian geese, it's amazing. All these birds that fly. Jeremiah chapter 20, 32, uh, 17 says, Ah, sovereign Lord, you have made the heavens and the earth by your great power and outstretched arm. And get these next five words, or six words. Nothing, say it with me, nothing is too hard for you. I'm telling you all this tonight to remind you, 
that if God can do all of this, your problems and my problems, there's nothing that's too hard for him. Nothing. Can you believe that? Nothing is too hard for him. If God can do all those things, my problems and your problems are not, not that difficult for him. That's what Jeremiah says. Nothing is too hard for you. When I look at creation, I don't know about you, but I stand amazed at all of this. How about the miracle of our human body? Again, the psalmist says, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I was almost tempted to see if our doctor would come and share with us tonight, but he maybe would go too long. But anyways, I'm going too long. So y'all, y'all heard that our bodies were supposed to be 70% water. I, don't, I haven't figured that one out yet. But here's some amazing facts about our body from encyclopedia. Did you know that our nerve impulses to and from the brain uh, travel faster than 170 miles per hour or 270 kilometers? That our nose does more than just smell? is responsible for thermal regulating the air we breathe, thus keeping our bodies at a perfect temperature needed to stay alive? Did you know you shed and regrow uh, skin cells every 27 days? That means more than 1,000 new skin cells over your lifetime. Over the course of just one day, our blood runs a distance of 19,312 kilometers. The total length of all the nerves in the human body is 75 kilometers. A human takes approximately 20,000 breaths a day. The heart beats 35 million times a year. 35 million times. No wonder our heart gives out. (laughs) That's a lot of time. The average person consumes 35 tons of food during his or her lifetime. I have to admit, I'm probably about 40 tons. (laughs) Although my wife has me on a diet, so I'm going to bounce out here. What? (laughs) Dr. Linda. (laughs) You didn't know she was a doctor, did you? Okay, and then here's the last one. We are finely tuned and carefully designed machine with all parts relying on the other to function in perfect unison. Isn't that amazing? You realize, you know, you're scratching your nose. Do you know how much effort that took? Your brain had to send a signal down to your body. And your arm had to cooperate with your fingers. I mean, you think about that, right? Isn't it incredible? We don't even think about it. We don't even think about it. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. The human body is a masterpiece. You know, when I worked in the sawmill, I found that when I worked, you know, I worked on the green chain, but I also worked on the uh, planar chain. And, uh, you know, so, and so sometimes I didn't want to wear gloves. Like, you know, after a while, you really can build up calluses. But gloves, you know, you wear them out quite, quite quick, quickly. But your skin just keeps replacing itself. You know, you get blisters and you get calluses, and it's quite strong. It's amazing. Our bodies are incredible. They are incredible. We are a masterpiece. Don't ever say, don't ever put yourself down. Don't ever say you're ugly or whatever. You're not. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. Say that with me. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Tell the person next to you, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. (laughs) You are amazing. You are amazing. We are amazing. We are walking miracles. We are walking miracles. And my last one, the miracle of the universe. Psalm 8 and we'll read a few verses there. Chapter, verse 1 says, O Lord, our God, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. Verse 3, when I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars, which you have set in place. Didn't Neil Armstrong read those verses when he was out of outer space? I think it was Neil Armstrong, one of those astronauts, when they were going out to the moon, to walk on the moon, I think it was. 
and they read these verses. He was obviously a believer, but he read these verses. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is man that you are mindful of him, the son of man that you care for him? Now, the infinite, you know, the, I mean, our universe holds many secrets. How many know one day we're going to get a chance to explore all that? It's going to be exciting, huh? Are, are you excited about exploring that? No? You just want to get to heaven and forget the rest. I mean, it's going to be exciting to explore all that. I mean, the depths and stuff. Did you know that there are and I don't know how scientists know that, but they say that there are at least 200 billion trillion, or the proper word is sextillion stars in the universe. That is a lot of stars. I say, I don't know how they came up with that, but that's, that's what I, I read that several places. Isn't that amazing? A billion trillion. It's actually, I think, it's about 26 zeros in there, or 20, I mean, it's 27 zeros in there. It's a, it's a huge amount. Or the Milky Way is made for, from other galaxies. Can you believe that the sun is so large that one million Earths are needed to completely fit inside it? It is even speculated that there are other universes beyond the universe that we are currently reside in. You know, if you were looking for further proof that God exists, all you got to do is walk outside because it all declares his glory. When Linda and I lived up north, and some of you pastors had lived up there, we got to enjoy the northern lights. There were lights. Amazing. And I remember my mom, you know, she's never been that, you know, up there. And, and after my dad passed away, each one of us kids, you know, we, we had her for a month after that. Uh, just before she gets a chance to get resettled. So anyway, she came up in September, and, um, and, and, and the northern lights were out one night. And so I said to my mom, come out on the deck. The northern lights are out there dancing. And she went out on that deck. You know, my mom's a real godly woman. And she, she was saying, oh. And of course, she was just praising the Lord as she's out there. Wow. Oh, you know, it was It was amazing. How can you doubt that there's a God when you see all that? Linda and I have lived in some of the most beautiful country, you know, uh, places in the world. I mean, we have lived uh, in Arizona. We passed it for three years. The Grand Canyon was in our backyard. It was only 20 miles away, and we were right down the Colorado River. I mean, we were surrounded by the Grand Canyon. How can anybody look at the Grand Canyon and deny a God? I mean, I know evolution says, you know, just, you know, made all that. Come on, give me a break. And then we were in California, at Bishop, California. We were surrounded by the uh, Sierra Mountains on one side and the White Mountains on the other side. Beautiful, you know, mountains on both sides. And then we uh, went to, uh, from there, Port Harding, the beautiful ocean there, and the lakes, and, I mean, and, you know, all the islands out there. Port Owls was next, you know, similar stuff. Bella Coola. I mean, everywhere we've gone. And Kelowna, we got to put Kelowna in there, right? <laughs> All this beauty that surrounds us. I mean, how can we ever doubt that there is a God? And I know you don't doubt that there is a God, but all these things declare his power. They declare his glory. They declare that he is a big God, that he is a God of miracles. And if he can do all of that, don't you think he can meet your need? Don't you think he can meet your need? I don't know what your needs are, but he can meet your need. And, you know, when you read through the Gospels, I mean, the, the things that Jesus did are amazing, the stuff he did. And again, the fourth square church says what? Jesus Christ. The Jesus that was in the Gospels is the same Jesus that is today. He is the same Yesterday, today, and forever. I, the Lord, I changed not. He changes not. What he did he, there, he can do today. We just got to believe. All things are possible to him who believes, right? To him who believes. So, you know, if you're 
looking for miracles, they're all around you. They're all around you. And miracles, they surround us. They surround us. And I got to tell you, when I look at all these miracles, it inspires my faith. Because I think, God, if you can do all that, there's nothing that's too difficult for you. Nothing that's too difficult for him. We just have to believe. So, so we have to do some warfare. We got to get rid of that doubt. You know, doubt is our enemy. Got to get rid of that doubt and come in faith believing. Because if we can believe, all things are possible. That's what the scripture says. That's not my words. That's what the Bible says. If we can believe, all things are possible. So let's not give in to doubt. Let's stand in faith. This Sunday, we're talking about faith. As we're doing our five on five, I'm going to be one of the speakers. <laughs> five and five. I got to speak for five minutes. That's going to be a miracle right there. <laughs> if I get five minutes, whoo. <laughs> so again, on September the 7th, we're going to be talking about miracles in the making. And on the September the 14th, I want to talk about the miracles of healing. And we're going to be praying for people to be healed. And, if, and I'm going to encourage you, if you want to even do some fasting and praying for that service, that would be great. You know, I'm not asking you to fast till, from here till then. But if you want to fast a meal, you know, that, that week before, let's come believing God for some real miracles. Can you do that with me? Can we do that? Can we believe that God can do some miracles? How many here need a miracle? There's, a, there's quite a few of you. Maybe you need a miracle of healing. It could be a miracle of finances. It could be a miracle in some other area. But the God we serve still works miracles. Let's pray. Father, thank you that you're a miracle-working God. We are surrounded by miracles. So, Lord, will you, will you inspire our faith? Will you help us, Lord, to have faith in you? Lord, help us to get rid of doubt. Lord, we know that doubt wants to come and wants to, wants to tell us all kinds of things that, that are not scriptural, that, that, you know, that Lord, that they just, it, it, tends to, uh, it tends to, Lord, weaken our faith. And so, Lord, we don't want to stand in doubt. We don't want to give in to doubt. But, Lord, we want to be people of faith, people who believe, people who stand on your word, who declare your promises, because they are yea and amen to those who believe. And so tonight, Lord, we speak faith and we believe your word and we want to stand on your word. And God, we believe that as we stand on your word, we're going to see God great things happening. We're going to see miracles. And we declare that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Pastor Dan, go leave us in a closing it song. Took a miracle to put the stars in place. It took How many here have experienced a miracle in your own life? All right, a lot of hands. Well, in, the, in September, when we come back uh, after the meal, you know, the, in September, we want to give opportunity for some testimonies. We want to hear some of those miracles. So that'll be in September. Uh, look forward to hearing what God has done for you. We'll try to get as many as possible. Great being with you again tonight. Enjoy the beautiful Kelowna evening. God bless.